My name's Simon Pirani. I'm a senior visiting research fellow at the Oxford Institute for Energy Studies. Uh, and my background is as a historian uh, and a journalist. And I've been writing about energy in the former Soviet Union for a long time and recently researching a book on the global history of fossil fuel consumption. My research is about the global history of fossil fuel consumption and the way that fossil fuel consumption has risen since the middle of the 20th century and about the way it's continued to rise even after the discovery of global warming made it clear that it's very important to begin the transition away from fossil fuels. And I've tried to say something substantial about why it's uh, developed in that way. It's not a work where I've gone and discovered a lot of new things that nobody knew before. It's a work of synthesis and of interpretation. I've looked at what other people have written, whether historians or reports from international organizations or from uh, companies working in the energy sector or whatever, uh, to try to get an understanding of how we've got to the situation that we're at now, where consumption is at an unsustainable level. I think by its nature such a big subject is very hard to uh, boil down into such messages, but I'd say two things. First of all, uh, there's a message about uh, the way that fossil fuels are consumed by technological systems. So to take, for example, the uh, petrol that many people put in their cars, it's not just about the individual person uh, putting that petrol in their car. It's about car-based transport systems which were developed in the USA prior to the uh, Second World War and which spread across a lot of countries of the rich world in the years after the uh, Second World War. It's about the investment in road-based systems as opposed to rail, about the way that cities uh, developed in such a way uh, that favoured uh, car transport, and about politics, about uh, very poor uh, fuel efficiency regulation, about lobbying by the big uh, car companies, uh, and about planned obsolescence, which was actually invented uh, by the car industry to sell more and more and more cars, uh, mostly heavier, mostly more gas guzzling. So there's a whole complex of uh, things that explain uh, the level of consumption. Uh, it's technological systems embedded in uh, the social and economic systems in which we live. The second takeaway uh, point, if you like, is about politics. In 1992, we had the Rio summit. The world's governments gathered at Rio and acknowledged that global warming uh, was uh, in part, in, in mainly, caused by uh, greenhouse gas emissions, uh, that those emissions had to be reduced and obviously uh, fossil fuel consumption therefore had to be reduced. What has happened since 1992 is that fossil fuel consumption growth has not only continued but accelerated. And I think to try to get our heads around that, to understand uh, this monumental failure of the world's governments, uh, a failure on a historical uh, scale, is quite difficult. And I think it to the extent that governments and states claim to uh, represent the whole of society, I think that amounts to a crisis of legitimacy of those governments and states. The implications of uh, that uh, second point about the political process, about the uh, process that started at the uh, Rio Convention, are that if these governments have failed, um, in my view, we have to ask the question about how can society as a whole take action to do what governments haven't done. In other words, we've got to try to make the transition away from fossil fuels a matter for the whole of society. That sounds very general uh, because it's a question to which there's no easy answer. Um, in my view, the best way to sum up uh, the necessary steps from here are to say that 
if the fossil fuels are consumed through these technological systems that are embedded in social and economic systems, then to move away from fossil fuel consumption, we need to change not only the technological systems, but also the social and economic systems in which we live. And that's big and it's complicated and it's a matter for all of us uh, to worry about and to do something about.